how would you describe your leadership style? Oh, I think I'd, I'd hope that it was quite calming. Um, I think it's important that you know the players around you, you know the players in your team, because it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. There's there's different things that you might have to do or you might have to adapt for different players to get the most out of them. Um, but I think the most important thing is listening to your players, knowing what they need from you, having that sort of bridge between the staff and the players that you know people feel comfortable and I think we've got that here. Um, so yeah, I think I'm hopefully quite a calming presence for for the players because I know that during games emotions can be heightened and things go against you, things go for you but it's about trying to maintain that, that calmness not just for you but to calm down other players as well to make sure that we're all we're all calm no matter what happens during the game and that we remain focused. Maybe need to ask the players but I'd like to think <laughs> probably quite firm and demanding but also hopefully quite personable and caring. Um, I think I don't know, my, my I suppose I understand their leadership is, especially in stuff like football, it's, although it's a sport, it's very much a people industry, so if you don't know how to get the best out of people and how to relate to people and how to make people feel valued and an important part of the team, then I don't think your leadership really works, so I think I try to be firm and set expectations and be demanding at the right times, but hopefully I like to think the players maybe respond to that because they do recognise it when they deserve it, I'll also give them lots of praise and, and care about them doing well in their development. How would you motivate the team when, when the game isn't going the way you want? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's important that when the game isn't going the way that you want, as I say, that you remain focused. I think probably one of the more recent ones was a part of this whole game. We lost two quite early, early goals within that game, so it's important that you know, I brought the players in I made sure that they forgot about the two goals because the more you think about it, that can impact you further on into the game. So if things aren't going well, you've kind of got to be able to bin it as quick as possible so that you can then focus on what you then can change. I think as a coach, the, the challenge is because it's such an emotive sport that naturally you probably want to say what you're thinking all the time, but actually normally you need to think, right, what do the players actually need to hear in a certain circumstance? So I would always be honest with players, but I think sometimes you have to dress it up in a different way. So if things aren't going so well, why might that be? Is it a lack of effort? Is it a lack of quality? Is it a lack of belief? I think you need to try and recognise maybe what's causing it to not go so well. I think that comes back to Robin's point about you then need to make sure you have a bond with your players and know your players well enough to know what they might be thinking, what they might be feeling and what maybe they're going to respond to best. So for me, if things aren't going so well, yeah, it probably, if it's a lack of effort, which thankfully we don't ever have, then it's maybe that's when you probably are quite direct and it's make it clear that that's not acceptable. If it's maybe just a lack of belief or a lack of confidence, then you probably phrase things in a way that's maybe going to build that confidence. And sometimes you just need to tell people things aren't quite good enough as well, which we've had those conversations as well. But again, I think as long as everyone knows that you do care about them doing well and everyone's in it together and people take that in the road. What are the most important skills for leadership in football? I think your communication is massive. I think not only on the pitch but off the pitch as well, knowing what's going on with players, if they need a wee bit more encouragement that week, if they need maybe somebody to speak to, um, it's important to know what your players need from you at all, all times. It is also as important um, what your, the, the coaching staff need from you as well. So you've really got to be able to provide um, that sort of shoulder for, for any players that need it. As you know, we've got quite a young squad this year, so it's important that if this is maybe their first time in senior football, I need to use my experience of what I know and what I've learned um, to be able to, to help them through the game as well. Most important skills, Robin said communication. I think that's so key. It's not even just verbal, it's your body language, it's how you are. You know, so there's no point in me coming in on Monday if we've got beat and I'm all down in the dumps and then I'm telling players to get over it and go on the next week's training. You, I think you have to obviously lead, lead by example in that regard. So communication, absolutely. I would like to think I wouldn't ever ask any of my players or staff to do anything I wouldn't do. So whether it's looking after equipment, whether it's being polite to people, whatever it might be, I think you need to, if you want certain values or certain mor morals in your organisation, I think you need to make sure you demonstrate them yourself or else you just lose a bit of credibility and integrity in that. Um, and then I think certainly something I've I've learned in terms of since I've been in this post, you know, I've coached for 20 years, but I've only coached for nine months with adults, mm -hmm. which is totally different to coaching yeah. coach with young players is important important skills is as very as quickly as you possibly can, you need to read the room. So what are people feeling, what are the emotions, what's the vibe? Standards-wise, does anything look like it's going to drop? Maybe we need to address that. 
equally what are people feeling if they got challenges in their personal life that might be contributing to how they're being able to perform and that obviously then maybe alters ever so slightly how you might approach certain situations. So yeah, I think being a leader is, is difficult. I think what we've tried to do certainly this year is have lots of people around the place that can show those leadership skills as well. And if, if certain people are maybe finding things tough, there's, there's more than one voice to hear to help people with that. So yeah, I think it's hard to maybe pinpoint, I think when it comes to leadership style, leadership skills, for me, it's more about a way of being and how you are as opposed to saying you need to do that, you need to do that, you need to do that. I think it just comes back to leadership skills. I feel like I've learned a lot from this year and I feel much more confident to actually go on the pitch, help others and actually do it myself independently as well and it's definitely a build up from my training session but I felt that it was quite useful because it's, well, it's the first, it's the professional team and well Bobin was quite good at explaining it and I just feel confident now trying to be the captain and impressing Steve and my coaches and trying to get that position as captain.